Hello everyone, this is going to be an unboxing and review of the Numworks graphing calculator. So straight from Amazon, $99. It comes in this very sleek, pretty looking box here. It's very nice to not have to deal with any more of this type of packaging right here. And there we have it. Um, it's a very simple box. Have the calculator in here, and then you get a charging cable included, and below that is a very small amount of paperwork and a sticker. So here it is. Um, it's a very simple, clean design, all plastic. The screen is plastic. There is only one port on the bottom here for charging and plugging it into a computer to update the operating system. On the back, there is no battery panel or anything, just a reset button there in the middle, and then six pads that allow you to set this thing flat on the desk, and it makes it so it doesn't slide around super easily. The buttons are pretty nice. They don't make any serious shaking sound or anything. They don't feel like cheap plastic, but they are nothing special compared to you know, most other calculators. So just to give you an idea of thickness, here is the Numworks next to the TI-84 Plus CE, and then next to the Casio FX9750 Generation 3, and then here it is next to the HP Prime. So you can see here that the Numworks calculator is quite a bit smaller than pretty much any other graphing calculator you're gonna find. And here all of these are turned on so you can kinda see a size comparison with the screens. So I'd say the screen size is most similar to the one on the TI-84 Plus CE, although the TI-84 Plus CE is a little bit bigger than the Numworks. And then you can definitely tell that the screen on the Numworks is set back into the frame. It's not pressed up closer to the main plastic there. In the year 2020, that definitely makes it look a little bit more like a dated device. Anyways, next I'll start talking about the software on this calculator. This is the home screen with the nine different apps that come preloaded on the Numworks calculator. And for now, I'm gonna start out with where you will be spending most of your time, the calculation app. So this is like almost any other calculator out there. You just type your expression in and then hit enter and you'll get your expression over here, answer over here, and they will, your history will pile up as you keep typing things into the calculator. So there's no computer algebra system for the Numworks calculator, but you will be getting all of your answers in exact simplified form. So even things like trig functions, if I do sine of pi over three here, you can see it gives me the exact answer of the square root of 3 over 2, and then the decimal answer will always be given over to the right of that. And then, as you saw from this example, almost everything you type in will appear as it does in a textbook, so you get a sort of math print mode on this calculator where fractions will look like actual fraction templates, and square roots will look like square roots, and so on. And then, besides what comes up on the keypad here. If you press this button for the toolbox, this is kind of like the math menu on a lot of other Texas Instruments calculators. Uh, you'll get this menu here and you can scroll through and find the functions that you want. There's quite a few, including derivatives and integrals. Obviously, once again, this is not a CAS calculator, so any integrals you do will have to be definite integrals. There's no solving indefinite integrals with this calculator. But just to give you an idea, I'll just quickly flash through each screen in this toolbox here so you can see every function that you can use in the calculation screen. It's going to be very fast. Pause the video if you actually want to look at any of these screens. Um, so that's it for that. Okay, before I move on, I'm going to do this quick speed test here. 
This is the sum of e to the 0 0.001 n from 1 to 10,000. And I am pressing the enter key right now. Um, it's kind of strange. It's doing the calculation right now. There's no indication that it's loading, but that's what it's doing at this point in time. And there's the answer pretty quick for that sum. Like most calculators these days, internal calculation will not be much of a problem. That took a couple seconds, but you're not often going to be doing a sum uh, as ridiculous as this. Okay, next up is the functions app, and this is for everything to do with graphing lines. So this is the screen you get when you first open it up, and you press execute to add a new function and then it will select a color and you can type in whatever function you want. You can pretty much add as many functions as you want and it will graph those all on the same graph. So I have these three just for example and we go over to the graph tab and then you can see it draws those out. It's pretty fast compared to a lot of other graphing calculators out there and then you can see with this relatively high resolution screen and color that the lines look very nice and well defined and it's easy to tell what's going on even when there are multiple functions on the same graph. And then as you might expect you can use the arrow keys to scroll through different functions you have graphed and then you can pick one and do some calculations based off that function so here's a list of things you can do and just for example if I wanted to find the maximum or maximums of a function I would just click this and then it would go ahead and snap to one of the maximums of that function and down here you can see the x and y coordinates of that local maximum and then you can scroll left or right and it will automatically select the next local maximum over and then of course as you saw you can also find intersections between the selected function and the other functions on the screen and scroll through those. You can find zeros, you can find the area under a given section of the curve and it will show you the limits of integration that you have selected and then you just press enter and it will give you a decimal approximation of the area under the selected limits. And there's also a function where you can scroll along one of your functions and with the tangent operation selected it will follow your cursor along and print a gray tangent line wherever you are selected on that function. And then if you want to you can use the zoom option to zoom in and out using the plus and minus keys and then use the directional pad to scroll around and get a better look at your functions. And the only problem I have with this zoom function is that it has to redraw the lines every time you change the window size or pan location. So you can see here every time I click the arrow you have to wait for it to update the screen and redraw the functions. This is the case on a lot of graphing calculators but some like the HP Prime work more like Google Maps on your phone or something where it doesn't have to update every time you scroll to the left or right or zoom in and out. But other than that, it works quite well. And of course, if you want, you can always manually set the upper and lower limits for the x and y axes. So finally, there's also a table function over to the right of the graph window, and this is pretty simple. It's just a table of x values and then their corresponding y values for the three functions that you enter. So also you can go to set the interval and you can set uh, where you want the x values to start and end and you can also set the step size. So if you want to get a very detailed look at how y changes with x, you can for example set this to 0.01 and then hit confirm there and you can see the x values now change by only 0 0.01 every row and the outputs change accordingly. And added in a recent update was the ability to graph polar coordinates. So if you go to your functions menu here and then select the function name, you can change the curve type to either Cartesian, which is just regular coordinates, polar coordinates, or parametric coordinates. So for example, if I wanted to graph this function right here, I would just type it in and then also make sure you set your correct plot range. So right now I have theta going from 0 to 100. By default it will just go from 0 to 2 pi. And then once you're ready to graph, just go up to the graph window as usual, press enter, and it will draw your function.
So you can use that graph I just did as sort of a gauge for the graphing speed of this calculator. So just as a final speed test, I'll do this function that I often do, sine of x squared, and press execute. And there we go, you can see it did that pretty fast. So for the most part, graphing speed on this calculator is going to be fast enough for the vast majority of functions you are going to be graphing. So next is the Python app here. I'm not going to go too in-depth uh, on this particular app for this video, but in short, you can code in Python on this calculator and run your programs from it. So this, these um, four here that they have are on the calculator by default, and here you can just kind of get an idea of what the interface looks like. And then anytime you want to execute one of the functions, you just go to these three little dots and press execute script and it will run your program from there. So this is the app that they call Statistics, and you can see I've entered some data here in one of these simple tables, and then you can go up to any of these tabs. Here's a simple histogram, and then you also get a box plot, and then if you go all the way over to the right, you get all of your typical statistical values, mean standard deviation, variance, and uh, quite a bit more. Next is the Probability app. Here you can choose from a list of distributions, and then enter your variables like mean and standard deviation. I've just entered these random ones here, and then it will give you a nice plot, and then you can enter values here, and it will give you a visual representation and a numeric probability for the value that you've entered for x to be less than or equal to. So the next app is a simple equation solver. You can choose from various different templates here, and then edit one of those templates. And once you hit enter, you'll have the option to press solve the equation, and it will give you the possible values for x in exact form using the quadratic formula in this case, and the decimal form. So you can also use this app to solve systems of equations. Here I have three variables and three very simple equations. Solve this system, and if possible, it will give you values for x, y, and z. This app is very similar to the functions graphing app except it's for sequences so I have pre-entered these values in here and then when you go up to the graph tab you get a nice plot of all of the points and then this is an app for linear regression so here I have already entered some X and Y values just as an example and then when you go over to graph here it will plot your points and then give you a line of best fit and your equation for that line of best fit and you also get your correlation coefficient and that is it as far as a quick quick overview of all of the apps and functions that the NumWorks graphing calculator has. Here's one really quick look at the settings menu in case anyone was curious about that. So overall I'd say this is a pretty well put together device. It's thin and sleek and has a very modern feeling interface when compared to other graphing calculators out there. For the amount of functionality you get, it is, I would say, a little bit more on the expensive side. If you want a cheaper option, you should definitely look at Casio graphing calculators, but it is cheaper than most of the TI-84 Plus models that you're going to find on the internet or in stores, and in a lot of cases it outperforms those calculators. But again, it's not nearly as widely used as almost any other graphing calculator out there, so teachers in classes are not going to be very familiar with how this calculator works, but as long as you feel like you can figure it out yourself, you should be fine for any high school math class, college math class, or personal use. So thanks for watching if you made it this far, and if you feel like wasting more of your time for any reason, you can always subscribe down below.